Senator Cruz, we welcome you to the EIB mi uh, microphone in the program. Great to have you here, sir. Rush, it's fantastic to be with you. I um, I have to tell you, I, I've had so many people. Uh, I've been off the past couple of days, but while this has been going on, I've had so many people email me so uplifted by what uh, you did in the last 21 hours and what you did leading up to it. So many people so happy that there finally is some leadership, That so happy finally somebody who's doing in Washington what they were elected to do, what they said they were going to do. And I just, before we started, I, I, I'm sure you're hearing much the same thing, but I wanted you to know that while you're getting all these uh, arrows, as pioneers do, there's a lot of appreciation and a lot of love for what you're doing out there. Well, Rush, thank you so much. Thank you for that encouragement, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, I really hope that that over the course of this week we'll see more and more Republicans step forward. We had quite a few Republicans come down to the floor uh, and support the effort, and I hope that we'll see as many Republicans as possible and even some Democrats come together and, and listen to the American people. As, as you know, every week you talk to 20 million Americans. You, you know where the American people are on this, and it's not a close call. Obam Obamacare isn't working, and millions of Americans are hurting. And if the Senate just listens to the American people, we'll do the right thing, and we'll vote to defund it. Well, in a political sense, it's been one of the things that surprised me, because you're right, no matter what poll you look at, a vast majority of people oppose this. And I look at this, not, politics isn't my business, getting votes isn't my business, but it seems to me that this is a ready-made opportunity. Here's a chance for the Republican Party to connect to a majority of the American people on a fundamental issue if they're looking for something that could get them back. That could give them an identity, could could give them a little boost. This seems to me to be it, but they they seem to want to have no desire to to oppose this in any meaningful way, and it's it's got me and a lot of people befuddled. Well, look, Rush, I understand that frustration. It, it, it's why I think, in many ways, the central issue that we were trying to focus on in the filibuster was was not the continuing resolution. It wasn't even Obamacare as, as horrific as it is for the economy. The central issue, I think, is the long-standing problem we have had with Washington not listening to the American people, with Democrats and Republicans. A lot of folks who've been in office way too long who stopped listening to their constituents. And, and as a result, we see lots of theater, lots of empty symbolic votes, and very little willingness to actually stand up and fight well, now, wait. Half of the American people. Theater is what you were accused. Michael Barone, as soon as you finished, accused you of engaging in theater and that you knew it and that you knew there's no way you have any prayer of accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Others have said that you're just fundraising and you're making it look like you're doing something substantive, but it's just theater. Well, you know, one of the approaches that those who want to maintain the, the status quo, who want to make sure Obamacare stays funded, who want to avoid any risk. One of the approaches they do is they try to make this all about people. They try to make it all about personalities. And, and listen, most Americans could not care less about any politician in Washington. They don't care about me. They don't care about anybody else either. And what is utterly maddening about all of these reporters is what do they write about all day long? They write about the process, they write about the horse race, they write about this personality or the other. They act like they're Hollywood gossip columnists, writing about bickering. I mean, how many times have you and I both read the word Republican Civil War in the past week? Because that's what they like to write about. Right. And, and listen, what I tried to spend much of the filibuster all but begging the media to do. In fact, I explicitly said, listen, all right, you guys can't resist writing some about the process, some about that silliness, but let me just ask you 50% of what you write. Discuss the substance of how Obamacare is the number one job killer in the country, how millions of Americans are suffering, how it's forcing people into part-time work, how it's threatening millions of Americans' health insurance. Just write a little about the substance. And the strategy on the other side is really twofold. Number one, confuse the voters. Confuse the voters with procedural obfuscation, with complexity, so that they don't understand what's going on. And number two... Make it all about personalities. And listen, others can engage in that game. Rush, I have no intention of, of defending myself or reciprocating. I, it's not about anybody. It's not about us. It is about listening to the American people and stopping this disaster, this nightmare, this train wreck that is Obamacare. 
One of the things I wanted to ask you about um, is a, I know, I know you just said you don't want to defend yourself, and I'm not asking you to do this, but I do want to, I do want to put to you a criticism that I have heard, and it is, you have to, that you have, oh heaven forbid, you have ignored the inside rules of the Senate, that you didn't go to your party conference to try to convince them, etc., to do this, and that you love just being an outsider, and that, and that the precious rules of the Senate were not observed, and because of that, you're harming the party. Well, I will note that uh, some of the folks making that argument, uh, in fact, the only folks I've seen making that argument are, are not, in fact, senators, not, in fact, senators who attend uh, the meetings. Indeed, I've heard it referred to as the Thursday meeting of the conference. The meeting's actually on Tuesday. So the people who go on television purporting to know what they're talking about, they don't actually know what day the, the Senate meets. And more fundamentally, I've intended... Uh, not all, but virtually all of the meetings since I've been in the Senate. And we have been discussing, number one, strategies on Obamacare for at least six months. Mike at Lee and I have been going over and over and over again saying, does anyone else have an alternative? Does anyone else have any plan? And there's never been a plan. And we've been talking about this for months. So nobody has an argument, at least no one that's actually attended those lunches, that we didn't discuss this ad nauseum. Now, they have a different argument that we didn't wait for and get their approval and permission to stand up and do our best to fight this fight because, look, each of the 100 senators, we're elected by our constituents, and, and I've got an obligation not to to my colleagues, but, but to 26 million Texans exactly. to fight for them. Senator, most of your colleagues said exactly what you said in the last 21 hours, in the last two weeks, in the last year. Most of your colleagues said Years ago, what you said, at the moment of truth, they're not to be found. They've sought solace somewhere else. But they don't, they don't seem to... I look at what you're doing, forgive me for characterizing, I look at what you're doing as simply doing what you were elected to do, as you said, but you're also drawing a line. At some point, we've got to say we're not going to allow this kind of freedom to be lost in this country. I think this is what this is about. What Obamacare substantively is, is what you're about. Rush, I think you are absolutely right. And to be honest, look, I think what Mike and I are doing, I, I don't view as a terribly big deal. We're trying to actually stand for the principles that every Republican in the Senate says he or she believes in. We're trying to actually listen to the American people, and we're trying to tell the truth. I mean, part of why, you know, you know people ask, why does Congress have you know, a 10, 12, 15 percent approval rating? It's because for years... Congress has ignored the will of the American people. And this process, I think it's important for your listeners to understand how this process is going to play out this next week, because much of what the Senate does is engage in show votes that are designed to look one way to the voters and, in fact, be like World Federation wrestling, entirely fixed. So what's going to happen next is on, Wednesday, uh, on Friday or Saturday, we are going to have a vote on what's called cloture on the bill. That is the vote that matters. It takes 60 votes to grant cloture. What cloture is, is cutting off debate, saying there should be no more debate. And the reason that matters is if Harry Reid gets 60 votes to cut off debate to get cloture on the bill, he will then file one amendment, and he said only one amendment, that guts the House continuing resolution and that fully funds Obamacare. And so any Republican, in my view who votes for cloture, who votes with Harry Reid, who votes with the Democrats to cut off debate and give Harry Reid the ability to fund Obamacare fully on a 51-vote partisan vote of only Democrats, is voting to fund Obamacare. Now, a number of Republicans are going to maintain that, no, 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 their vote to cut off debate is in support of the House bill. And, Rush, that's simply not the case. It's a show vote. Now, if Harry Reid gets 60 votes, every Republican then will vote against his amendment to fund Obamacare. And so all 46 Republicans want to go home to their districts and say, gosh, I voted to defund Obamacare, and marvel of marvels we lost, which, which to be honest, is the outcome that I think more than a few of them affirmatively desire. And... <sighs> 
part of what's so problematic with Washington is how many Republicans want a show vote to pretend to their constituents they're fighting for what they say they're fighting for, rather than actually fighting for it and actually winning. And Well, that's it. That's it's in a nutshell right there. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, I, when you were running for Senate, you probably thought you were joining a lot of people that were like you, wanted to stop this. You get there, you find out you're one of three or four. I will tell you the single biggest surprise on arriving to the Senate is the defeatist attitude here. I mean, we don't even talk about how to win a fight. There's no discussion about that. We talk about, hey, let's get a show vote so we can go tell our constituents we're doing something. But it, I promise you, Rush, if you had to sit through one Senate lunch, you'd be in therapy for a month. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know that you could let it. As bad as you might think it is, that, and listen, they, they, these are good men and women. I, I, I don't, I respect them. I like them. Many of these are my friends. But they've been here a long time. And they're beaten down, and they just they don't believe we can win. They don't believe it can happen. And, and the answer, they say, on every issue is, no, we can't do it. We can't no, no. do it. And you're trying to get the American people to stand up and rise up and give them some energy. I understand that. That's, that's another thing what you're doing, I think, is misunderstood. Look, I know you're really tired. I've got a couple more questions. i got to take a break. Sure. Can you hang on? If you can't, I totally understand. You've been I, I am here for as long as, you, as long as you'd like me. Cool. Be right back, folks. Do not go away. Senator Ted Cruz with us here on the EID. <laughs> where we join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. But the reason is not that, that there's any fear involved. The reason is that i got a job to do, and it's to listen to the people, listen to 26 million Texans, and fight for them. And the reason why I, do, I can't think of an issue on which you and I are likely to disagree is you spend every day listening to the people, too. We're listening to the same bosses and trying to respond to the same people who are frustrated. I, don't, and, and, I, just listen, I respect them. I love exactly them. exactly right. I trust them. And... and Washington, look, in both parties, you've got entrenched politicians who have barely veiled contempt for the American people. I mean, they think their voters are, are gullible rubes, and, and if you, know, you give them a little show vote, you tell them, hey, I'm totally with you, and then they go to Washington, and they don't actually do what they say. Well, you do have that support, Senator. I've just, I've, I've got to wrap it up here, and I, I know you have other things to do, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate, um, uh, this time that we've had with you here since your filibuster. 20, well, you've, you've well thank be... you, Rush. Let me quickly say three things as we're wrapping up. Just one, I had the great privilege during the filibuster of reading your dad's essay, The Americans Who Read I'm so day. honored. I have, this, I have the tape. It, it was inspirational, and I'll tell you, it, it, it brought tears to my eyes. It's really powerful and, and beautiful. Just, just number two, quickly, to, to all of your listeners, this week is the fight in the Senate. And the reason the House voted as they did, the reason we've gotten where we are is because the American people have risen up an incredible hang, level. Hang on. Petition it, don't fund it. Hang doesn't. on for number three. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> we had that dreaded hard break that um, I couldn't move. So, but Senator Cruz, hang in there. Hung in there for the uh, for the third thing. Why don't you mention number two and number three again? You had to hurry, sure. number two. Sure. Well, look, this week is the week that the Senate will decide. This vote will be Friday or Saturday. And the only reason we got to where we are is because the American people have risen up in incredible numbers. We've seen over 1.6 million people sign the national petition at DontFundIt.com. That is why the House voted last week to defund Obamacare. You know, for weeks, everyone in Washington said they wouldn't do it, this would never happen, they would never fight this fight on the continuing resolution, but the American people rose up in enormous numbers. And so what, what I would say is, listen, at this stage in the fight, I, the, the, the fight is, is in the people's hands. And if we want to change Washington and get Republicans to listen, get Democrats to listen, what has to happen is I would urge every one of your listeners to go to DontFundIt.com to sign the national petition, number one. Number two, to pick up the phone, call their senators and tell them vote no on cloture stand strong can we on defunding obama would, would i be correct in 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 pointing out that this has been your objective all along you really do believe that the people of this country can affect change you believe that that's the system is designed for this ability to exist and that's all you're trying to do you're not trying to overthrow washington you're not trying to upset the apple cart you're not trying to rewrite anything you just want the citizens to get involved and let their voice have and be the power it can be correct that, that is exactly right and it's the only way to change washington i mean at the end of the day look i think some of the reason you've seen 
the unhappiness is, is by going to the people. We're basically appealing to the senator's boss, to, to my boss. I've got 26 million bosses. And if the American people stand up and light up the phones, light up Twitter, light up Facebook, light up email, and if elected senators hear from enough of their constituents, I promise you it gets their attention. And even those who don't want to stand and fight... All that has to happen is it has to get politically more risky to do the wrong thing than to do the right thing, and suddenly the numbers change in a big, big way. That's what happened in the House. The Senate's going to be harder. Well, it's but been done on... Aggress- it, in 2007, the people rose up and, and, uh, and stopped immigration reform in that summer. Uh, and what was pretty powerful then, Senator, because the Republicans at that point, we had a Republican president who was in favor of the immigration reform that was in the legislation. They had to go along with it, but it was the first time that they hadn't. The people rose up. It can be done. Rush, you're exactly right. We saw it in 07 on immigration. We saw it this year on drones. We saw it this year on guns. We saw it this year on Syria. When the people rise up, the politicians listen. Now, this fight, the politicians are dug in more. In the Senate, they're really entrenched, and so it's got to be a grassroots tsunami. So I would urge folks, don't just sign the petition. If you really want to change Washington, let me ask everyone listening, and there is no radio audience like, like, like your audience, Rush. Let me ask everyone listening, find three people this week to sign that petition and call their senators. If everyone listening to your show did that, it would shut down the Senate switchboards, and it would focus the minds and attention of senators. They wouldn't be happy about it, but it would focus them like nothing else, and it would help change Washington so we listen to the people, which is what we should be doing in the first place. I'll tell you, the uh, prevailing, the conventional wisdom is that uh, Reed's got his votes, that there's no way that this is ever going to happen. That even if the Senate did vote the way you want him to vote, Obama's going to veto it. There's, there's just no way that you can actually realize the outcome that you want here. Well, that's because virtually nobody in Washington believes it's possible to win the argument with, with the American people, to persuade, to move people. I think if the American people get engaged in sufficient numbers, first we unify Republicans on this vote, then we move red state Democrats. Listen, once we unify Republicans, if we can get 46 or all we need is 41 Republicans, then the phones light up on Mark Pryor and Mary Landrieu and Kay Hagan and all the red state Democrats and Mark Begich. And listen, if you're running for re-election in 2014 and say Arkansas and Louisiana, and you get 10, 20,000, 50,000 calls from your constituents, I guarantee you that changes your, your calculus. But that won't happen until the Republicans stop shooting their own, until the Republicans unify first. And so our objective is very simple, which is get all the Republicans to do what they say they believe in, just to stand up for what they've been telling their constituents over and over again they believe in. Well, it's so frustrating because the thing is such a disaster. And I think you, you, you made that point. All the delays, all the waivers, all the ways this thing's falling apart already, it doesn't deserve to be implemented just in the basis of competence. Look, it's exactly right. And, and it makes no sense that there should be special rules, special exemptions from President Obama for his buddies, for the rich and powerful and connected, for big corporations and Congress. members of Congress. They get exempted, but not hardworking Americans. Yeah, Congress is going to get subsidized to Office of Personnel Management. Yep. And, and I mean, that's Washington in the budget, which is, which is rules for thee, but not for me. We get special treatment. You know, uh, Dick Durbin came on the Senate floor and said, look, our health care is first class. We want to stick people back in coach. Uh, you know... I don't think members of Congress ought to have better treatment than the American citizens who are losing their health insurance because of Obamacare, who are being forced onto exchanges that aren't work- well, it was, working. It, it was really stunning. I forget the uh, exact day, but I see this story that said that, that uh, congressional and Senate staff, both parties, were complaining that what they earn, which is six figures, that they couldn't afford it yep. without, without the subsidy. So what, what, <laughs> I was... They they make more than the than the far more than national average. What what it it let me speechless. They they were we can't afford this. You wrote it. What do you mean you can't afford it? And that's why I support David Vitter's amendment to make every member of Congress, every congressional staff, every federal employee, including Barack Obama, subject to Obamacare. Now they will hate that. And listen, my goal ultimately is not to put them under Obamacare. It's for them to say, well, gosh, if you hate that, how about? exempting the american people too if it's miserable for you don't make it happen to the american people but the worst outcome is to subject the american people to this failed health care law 
and exempt the Washington ruling class. That's why the people are so frustrated with Washington. Well, I tell you, I think if more people knew that, I, uh, it, it reminds me of the uh, the House bank scandal in 1988. That was so easily understood. So is this. If more people understood that whatever is going to be the, the law of the land for them, Congress has exempted themselves from it. And if that, to me... Is if if more people could be made aware of that alone, which has been an effort here. Here, look, I, you had a third thing that you wanted to say. Uh, you had three points you wanted to say in closing. Uh, the, the 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 three were one mentioning reading your dad's wonderful uh, essay. Number two, sign up at don'tfundit.com. dot com. And number three, light up the phones to your senator okay. all this week. Well, Senator, I uh, I thank you again for your time. Uh, real pleasure. Honor to have you here, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. What's next for you? Uh, you you've got Senate activity all afternoon. When do you get some rest? Uh, keep fighting this fight. We had a vote. I'm actually going to tr- go and try and get a little bit of shut shut eye, and then then return hopefully with the strength to keep fighting as as, as right up until the vote. Uh, I'll confess, I'll take a little bit of sleep and and then be be right back in the trenches. Would you prefer this vote Friday or Saturday? Does it matter? Uh, you know, I would rather it Friday, and and the reason is. I want the American people paying attention to it. And I think Friday afternoon is a great time to capture the American people. Saturday, people are watching football. People are distracted. I, I think the Democrats and a fair amount of Republicans would like it Saturday because they don't want the American people engaged. I want to pick the maximum time for the maximum number of Americans to follow exactly what's happening and know exactly where every senator votes. Pretty comprehensive. Well, there you have it. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, thank you again, sir, and all the best. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. We'll be back, folks. Do not go away. <laughs> 